Hello, ladies of FBC. We are so excited to be here again to walk you through on bended knee, praying like prophets, warriors, and kings. I always have to look that up. I'm not sure why. We're in week five now. Can you believe it? So I'm Valerie George. I'm the women's ministry director here at Fellowship Bible Church. And this is my sweet sister in Christ, Rosemary. Rosemary, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I've been in FBC the last six years, and I'm part of the teaching team, which I adore. I learned so much from my co-teachers, and uh, also I'm involved in Grace in Action here at FBC, and uh, also I am my husband's helper in the AV ministry. Yeah, and so it's so great to have her here teaching this week. Um, Rosemary, I love it when you teach because you're, you get excited and you get, and she's faith filled and it's all about Jesus and it's just so wonderful to have you here with me. And so I'm so excited to jump in to week five and we're going to be talking about David, a prayer of lament. And we're specifically this week talking about Psalm 25. So if you have your Bibles at home, open them up to Psalm 25. We're kind of going to kind of go through it a little bit. And so tell us a little bit about Psalm 25. What, you know, we studied this all week. So right. this all week. Mm. What just gripped your heart this week about Psalm 25? What, if you could just say one thing about it to, to the ladies that just really gripped your heart about Psalm 25, what would it be? Um, I want to first say that the feeling's mutual about the oh. zeal and passion of the Lord. <laughs> with Thanks, that. Rosemary. And she was my cheerleader <laughs> in this session. Yes. Um, what I want to say about t Psalm 25, I think that personally gripped me and made a big impact in a deeper way is the fact that waiting on the Lord is active and it's not passive. And in that waiting process, the Lord just does uh, miraculous things in, in giving us patience and grace and the ability to trust him and love him and worship him in that way. Mm. So just the waiting on the Lord, the trusting the Lord, the, the just being patient and um, yeah, that's great. That's just really good. That's mm -hmm. just really great. And so um, what kind of Psalm is it? There's so many Psalms, right? right? There's so many Psalms. Who has authored the majority of them? Okay. Who, who authored most of them? Who's yeah. the author? Just who? You know. Dave, David. David. Uh, yes, he has, he has written the majority of the Psalms. Uh -huh. 73, so, actually, out of 150. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. So David is the type of person that took the time to journal his prayers, mm -hmm. and we are benefiting from that habit. And how. Amen. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and how to do it. That's actually, that's crazy. We have talked about this for a little bit, and I didn't even think of that, but that is how, that's what we're learning this week, how to actually express mm -hmm. to the Lord our prayers, even through journaling, because that's what David did. So tell us a little bit about this kind of psalm, like this literary form of this psalm. What kind of form is this? I think an easy way to think about it is to think of it as a book of praises. It's an, like an irreplaceable devotional or mm. prayer book. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. A, a hymns of it, praise. It's That's the best it, prayer book you can get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and in this section, we are going to focus on the lament, la, lament of it because there's different sections. There's actually five different wisdom book, et cetera. But we're going to focus on the lament, which means uh, you deal with real life in real life with our real God, we deal with pain yes. and desperation. And in that pain, we're able to express it, to feel sorrow. That's what lament means, to feel mm -hmm. sorrow, an expression of pain that is, has deep or pain or deep regret. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about the Psalms is, if you think about it this way, it's we get to eavesdrop mm -hmm. on David's prayers, his intimate, his most intimate prayers. Mm -hmm. And if you think about when the Psalms were written, it 
that when they were written, it was after the events. In some Psalms, we don't know the events. Other Psalms, we can pinpoint the struggle that he had. And you'll see that in Psalm 142. But we don't need to know it. We need to enter his world of emotion. And, and, and he gives us that pattern in the Psalm. And um, it actually is an acrostic, which means that they use that to help them to memorize the psalm. So that's the first pattern of a, of a prayer, like a, our father is, was our pattern in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a, one of the prayers of a pattern so we can learn how to pray and express our emotions to God. That's exciting that it's, it's teaching the Israelites how to pray. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives them a pattern. Because I had I had found that as well, that it was an acrostic, that it basically what that means is the verses begin with the successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Right. And to me, that, I, that made me think about who David was. Mm -hmm. You know, when you sit down to write a poem, you don't just stream of consciousness write. You start it, but you're starting, okay, for us it's... A through Z, right? So it would be A, the letter A, you know, I don't even know. It doesn't even come to mind. I would have to sit there and think about it. And so that explains... Alpha in, in the Hebrew, I think. Alpha. <laughs> right. Beta, something. Exactly. You know, I don't know the Hebrew alphabet, but I find it interesting that that's the kind of person David was, that he would take the time. And just like you said, we get to eavesdrop into it, and then we get to learn from how he did. So that is super exciting and so let's talk about the first section of this this psalm was divided up into sections right how would you divide up this this psalm into three did, was it three sections three yes if you were to outline it in the most simplest form if you're a note taker the first i think is the section 25 1 through 7 is the help we need comes from god mm. and by expressing our appropriate honest sorrow in prayer we affirm our dependence on him and his promises mm, that's great so we affirm our dependence on him and his promises while we're seeking the instruction exactly right? oh that's great so what's the second section then if you could summarize yes yeah, so the second part is his prayer of desperation no the second first part i mean but the second part is our God can be trusted. He is worthy of our trust as we wait on him. And which verses did that encompass? And like that was eight Psalm 25, 8 through 14. 8 through 14. Correct. That we can trust God. And that's where he goes. We can trust him. And that's great. And then the last section of the psalm. Yes, that would be Psalm 25, verses 15 through 22. And that's a petition. That's his real cry. What is he asking of God? And that's, um, and in that petition, the point there is trusting God. The result of trusting God is God. God brings us victory, benefits, and blessings. That's great. That's excellent. So let's get let's back up to the first section now, okay. and let's talk a little bit more about the first section, verses um, one through seven. But even even the first three verses because day one week five day one if you all turned in your books on bended knee it's pages 105 to 107 and that talks about the overall psalm they want to they want you to write kind of an outline out but then it's it gets specific to verses one through three so how would you share share something that stood out to you from that day well this is where we're David is saying, oh, Lord, my God, very personal. He already has his existing relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it's not a box hole prayer. This is something that David has learned mm. through, through his life and experience. And um, so it's personal, and he actually is not afraid to pour out his honest feelings before the Lord. And he uses words like, I lift up my soul. And that encompasses your whole heart, your whole being. I love that phrase. That phrase is what stood out to me. And it was like, that from which we draw our breath. You know, that's our everything. 
Exactly. Answer everything. And last week we talked about Hannah, and Hannah had a prayer of longing and lament as well. And in that, she said, I was pouring out my soul to the Lord when she was talking to Eli, because Eli thought she was crazy and mad. Right. She said, no, I'm not. I'm just pouring out my soul to the Lord. And in that, and, and I love how the New Living Translation translates that verse. The New Living Translation says, Oh Lord, I give you my life. Hmm. It's a full surrender. You know, it's that full giving surrender of all that we are to God and trusting that he's going to work out those details with his love and care, which we see later throughout the psalm that, you know, David addresses that, that God loves him yeah. and that God is a God of love, yes. you know, and so um, that was really great. What else stood out to you from this day? I think something about Psalm 142 she mentions it in the section part what did you want to point out from Psalm 142 well just that uh, that waiting again in Psalm 1 um, no that was 130 actually 142 is the same type of pattern right that same pouring out mm -hmm. uh, and um, just not, so we might skip that because um, we'll get back to the Psalm 142 mm -hmm. Okay, and then she, again, she references um, Isaiah 26 on page 107, and I love that she keeps bringing it up because it's about God being our rock, our firm foundation, and I just love that she cross-references that. So let's move on to day two, and um, this moves into verses four through seven, which is the second part of how you've kind of broken up the psalm into three parts. It's the second part of that. Um, anything you want to share about that? I think it's important in order to have the confidence to cry out to God in prayer, we have to trust him. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have to be sh confident that he is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And God is trustworthy. And it, it, there are other parts of scripture that really confirms that trustworthiness. And one of the things I believe is from Isaiah 53, verses 2 to 5. He's a man of sorrows. Mm -hmm acquainted with grief and he did that voluntarily became a human and he by obedience to his father and his father wanted to display love this is god the father salvation plan and jesus willingly comes and becomes flesh and blood and he becomes that man of sorrow so he knows what it means to be desperate he does, he prays that in the garden from um, Matthew 26. His first words are, my heart is sorrowful beyond measure. I mean, it's the sorrow, that deep sorrow that we can't even scratch the surface of. No, but, no one's sorrow can compare to God, Jesus himself in the garden. So that's why it's important for us to relate, not just to David, and to realize that everything points to Jesus. This is God's story. This is God breed these Psalms for us to reap the benefits from. It's not to elevate David or Hannah or Job, right. but it's to see how much love and worship he deserves mm -hmm. because of who he is. And I love the example of Jesus crying out in the garden and lamenting in that mm -hmm. moment and and that we can't even compare mm -mm. the laments that we have and the pain that we feel and the suffering that we go through in life because there is pain and there yes. is suffering and there um, but yet Jesus has experienced the worst of it all exactly and he cried out to God honestly openly and sought God's will exactly. and that's what we see from David yes here and that's exciting. And David is a type of Christ. And so he, he pays away. You know, something greater than David has come. Greater than Moses. And this is David, a type of Christ, pointing to that story. That mm. gospel story of God pouring out his blood, sweat and tears, in desperation of fulfilling the Father's will. In spite of how difficult it was. And that's what this psalm depicts, that real life is really hard. And Jesus even warned us of that. He said in John 16, 33, he said, uh, 
take courage. I've overcome the world. This world is filled with tribulation and trouble, mm -hmm. but take courage. I have overcome the world. That's where our focus needs to be. Yeah, and in that, we can seek what is God's will and how do we do that? Mm -hmm. And the verses four and five this week stood out to me. This was like, I'm actually trying to get to memorize it with my children and certain words just stood out. I'm reading from the NIV. Everybody's a little bit different, but they're similar enough. Mm -hmm. And it was the show me, teach me, guide mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. and I will hope in you all day long. You know, I, those words to me just stuck. They stuck like glue, glue to me. You know, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my savior there's that personal but you are god whether i know you or not whether i acknowledge you or not you are god Amen. but you are my savior yes. you know and my hope is in you all day long mm. and so i love that mm. you're depicting christ in this because mm -hmm. he is our hope yes. all day long and even jesus in the garden was crying out show me teach me guide me i don't want to do this mm -hmm. but you are my hope and for the hope set before me I will, Amen. I will. So even though I'm sweating these drops of blood, I will move forward, Amen. you know, and that's awesome. And, and the next couple of verses talk about remember me. And, you know, we had talked about that uh, last week too. Mm -hmm. And I love that David points out, remember me according to who you are, not according to who I, don't act according to my sinfulness, act according to your love and your mercy yes. that you would send your son Jesus to die on the cross in my place. Act upon that. Right. You know, I just yeah. thought. And that part, that teachable show me, instruct mm. me. It should, we, he's our creator. We need to learn that. And we, and we need it. There's conditions of learning. We need a humble spirit. We need a teachable spirit. We need to have that. We have to, and, and fear in God, that's going to, come up too. This is what, this is how we learn. This is how I think learn. you bring up a good point. If you, t if everybody turns to page 110, that's mm -hmm. where that she talks about that teachable heart yeah. right here and how important that is. And just like you said, where does a teachable heart start with what? You humility. With humility, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the opposite of humility? Pride. Pride. Yes. Our pride gets in the way. We think we know it all. Yes. You know, and we have to step back and have a teachable spirit. You know, just this week, I love how timely God's word is mm. because I was reading through this and just that day, I had an encounter with one of my children and I was able to use this material to help him mm. see that he was being prideful and he was mm. not having a teachable spirit and right. his brothers were being kind. They weren't being mean, they were trying to teach him and instruct him, mm. but his pride got in the way mm. and he didn't want to hear it. And then the self-doubt and the self-pity that's pride, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that exactly. pride? Yes, it is. Um, and that that is so important to have that teachable spirit. It reminds me of Proverbs. It says the fool mm -hmm. uh, hates instruction, but the wise person will will be hunger will be hungry for instruction and learning. Yeah, and that's on day um, four as she talks about the fear of the Lord. So what really is the fear of the Lord? What does that look like? You're already touching on it, so tell me more about that. Well, the fear of the Lord is an awestruck realizing, first of all, that God, our creator, is the one we come to. Not other people, not escapes that we're tempted to do mm -hmm. in our sorrow, in our trouble. Uh, not focusing on uh, not being problem-centered, but God-centered. That's the fear of the Lord. This psalm depicts the fear of the Lord in desperation. How does it depict it? Give me an example. How does this psalm depict the fear of the Lord? Where would you point people to explain that better? Uh, the first verse, by uh, depending on him, David goes to him in prayer mm -hmm. and pours out his heart. Mm -hmm. uh, he is teachable. He is waiting on the Lord. As we wait on the Lord and trust in him, as we realize how worthy he is. And if I could just read the sure. verse from uh, Revelation, mm -hmm. it's just so uh, moving as far as how worthy our God mm -hmm. is. And uh, this comes in Revelation, and it's verse 2 to 5 here. 
Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose, and to loose the sea, its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion in the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And in verse 12, it says, Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. God is worthy of our trust. And what does worthy mean again? It means worth of great value, great merit. He has merited. It's merited. Uh, it is without flaw of value. Excellent, deserving of excellence. Deserving of excellence. Mm -hmm. And I love that Jesus is the way. Mm. He is the way. We yes. don't need any other resources or anything else. He is the way. But we need to have a teachable spirit enough to be humble enough mm -hmm. to know that he is our resource and that everything we have comes from him. Yes. And that he is the one that gives us our resources. The different gifts and strengths that we have mm -hmm. come from him. And he is the one that can open the scroll. He is the one in heaven that they are crying, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Amen. He is the one. And that's where the fear of the Lord begins for us. Um, where else is the fear of the Lord? Tell me more about the fear of the Lord. Well, I think it, it's entrusting our God to bring us benefits and victory and blessing mm -hmm. that uh, we receive when we do trust. This is another uh, result of fearing the Lord mm -hmm. and that we can count our blessing and not be problem-centered but be God-centered. And in so doing, when we have that faith and we are trusting God and God-centered uh, and focusing on God and his promises and who he is and what he has done, then the outcome is these spiritual riches, victories, spiritual blessings, spiritual benefits, such as mm -hmm. grace received, strength mm -hmm. received, insight wisdom compassion comfort patience we learn how to wait on the lord to for his honor and glory as well as at that as an active thing as we wait on the lord not passive it is act of faith with humility and the fear of god that's mm -hmm. that's what it is because this all is coming from psalm 25 verse 12 you know it says mm -hmm. who then is the man that fears the lord you know, and it continues on. He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. He will spend his days in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. And verse 14 stood out to me. It says, the mm. Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. And she asked the questions about that, about confiding. I'm glad you in. brought that up. Oh, good, good, sure. Um, well, in verse 14, it talks about the secret thing. So when right. you have a close friend, what yeah. do you do? The, you're the only one that knows. Yeah, like, yeah. you tell secrets. <laughs> you tell secrets you with do. your close friend. So you're really, and you don't, you don't tell secrets to just, just a, a casual friend. Right. You only tell your secrets to your best buddy. Yes. And that's what is depicted here. And that. You're, and you'll get in real, you'll, you will actually receive insight and wisdom. That's, I think, maturity. That's what comes from having God as your best buddy and communicating <laughs> and abiding with Him. Uh -huh. He gives you insight. Oh, sometimes He wakes me up in the middle of the night, especially when I'm teaching. <laughs> and I love it. I love mm -hmm. when He does that. And he gave me that, the grain offering. He gave me that in the middle of the night, the portion. And I looked up portion, and it related all the way back to the Old Testament. And um, so he tells you them secret things, and you're going to learn more and more about the depth of Jesus. And that's when we spend time with the Lord, right? We spend time with our friends. That word confide is a friendship type yes. word. Some versions say 
the friendship of the Lord. And so that helped me to understand, yes. you know, that what it means to confide, that mm. friendship, that connection, mm. it, to have a friendship and relationship and connection like that, you have to spend time yes. with them, right? You have to spend time. That's your best buddy. You're, you're spending the most time with them. You should, right? Mm -hmm. And so how, and how do you spend time with the Lord? What's the, some ways you spend time with the Lord? The first thing in the morning, get up and I, I could spend hours. It's easy for me. But that's because I'm, you know, I, if I don't have a tight schedule, I've learned <laughs> that. Now, in my, I can't say that for when I'm in my 30s or my 20s. It was much more challenging. So I can relate to that as well. But I, I do, ha I spend time and uh, in the first thing in the morning and then at night I try to meditate on something, uh, something that God has taught me in the morning and, and recall it again. Or serve God in the middle of the day by just ministering private ministry to others, loving, oh, learning, loving nice. others. Yeah, just yeah. thinking about it, just constantly thinking about like Psalm 25 has helped me in that friendship, that getting to know God. You know, it's just so fun that I can call him my friend. Yes. And at first, from my background, it was really hard to mm -hmm. adjust and call him my friend because like that section of Revelation you read, mm -hmm. I do look at God in awe of right. who he is. He is great. He is majestic. He is all powerful. He is the Lord of hosts that has angel armies that he uses to conquer. And that is greatness that I can't even scratch the surface of. Right. Yet that God yeah. is our friend. Yes. He wants to be our friend. And he wants to reveal these secret things to us. Exactly. I love how um, the prophets of old would have loved to know mm. Jesus and the Messiah. That was what they yes. were longing for. Yes. Longing for. Are you longing for the Lord? In your life are you longing for him that's mm -hmm. the key and that comes from that humility knowing yes. we are without resource yes. that he is the one that provides all that we yeah. need and I so I just love that word the Lord confides in those who fear him he makes his covenant known mm -hmm. you can know the Lord you can know him mm -hmm. that is so amazing and humbling that this great conquering God Mm -hmm. would make himself known to us. Amen. And he's known in with Abraham as a friend of God. Mm -hmm. It's real into the most intimate relationship. And that has to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a time in my life I Phil mentioned this in his sermon and he mentioned superficial Christians compared to real true followers of God and I think in the in my 30s, in my late 30s, I could designate a time that I knew that I transitioned from a superficial Christian to a real true follower of the Lord. And it was because of my shame of my own sin. Mm -hmm. And David mentions that, and he's keen about being aware of how easy it, it is for us to sin and not follow after God. Because it's a hard road. It's not an easy road. But it's a rewarding road, and it's worth it. It is worth it, and I think that's why we see so many Psalms by David. Yes. That's why he wrote so many. He wrote them all throughout his life as the different troubles came along. Right. He didn't just write them in joy. He wrote them in all seasons of life. Right. In all seasons of life. Okay, so let's move into the last section of okay. Psalm 25. Mm -hmm. What is the last section of Psalm 25 all about? It is about... Um, trusting God, uh, the result. It's about the result of trusting God in victory, which I did mention with the spiritual blessings and the spiritual benefits, no matter what the outcome is. It's about uh, in our desperation, it, it's not, you'll see this psalm depicted at the end as petitions, and in David's desperation, what he is saying is it's not hopeless resignation, but it's hopeful anticipation of what God is going to do. Mm -hmm. Because she asked the question, like, what was David's state of mind in the psalm? How do you think he was feeling when he wrote this particular psalm? He was feeling overwhelmed. He had enemies. He was in danger of his life. It's like a, uh, he described it as a trap, a snare. He had uh, regrets. 
He had feared for his life. He was in, in despair. He was overwhelmed mm -hmm. with his troubles. He, and the way he says it is, the troubles of my heart are enlarged. Mm -hmm. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. And I think right now we can all relate to these feelings. And I even wrote lonely. Mm. You know, and I think right now yes. with the way we have to social distance and be isolated in our homes, we are feeling lonely. Mm. I mean, if someone mm. says they're not, I would have to look, give them a second look because it is lonely, even though we're with our families and that's really right. good. We're missing our friends. Yeah, because you're an extrovert. You know? Yes, I know. You introverts out there need to look out for those extroverts and give you're them right. a phone call because right. we need people, right. you know. And uh, mm. so we can relate to this. And I love mm. that she said... Um, that we need to turn to God and ask him for help. Mm -hmm. Turn to God and ask him for help. Cling to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, like we were talking about last week, fasten our eyes on him. Mm -hmm. Fasten our eyes yes. on him. When we have our eyes, it's a song with songs, Psalm 21, 1 and 2. Uh, we turn our eyes to Jesus. Where does our help come from? It comes, comes from, from our Lord. creator, the maker of heaven and earth. And so we won't notice that our feet are ensnared and entangled with the trouble. We'll be looking upward and not inward, not in our, in our troubles, mm -hmm. but upward. So how do we apply this pattern of praying to our lives? How do we take this Psalm 25 and now in the end she said, write your own lament. How do we actually apply this kind of praying? What's a good way to do that? How do we do that? To actually do journal it, actually practice it. There's only one way to do it, it's to do it. Not to get sidetracked when trouble comes and pick up the phone and call your friend first. <laughs> the panic button. <laughs> yeah, the panic button, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's to, in faith, practice it. That's where... Wisdom comes from practice. That's where you grow in holiness. Practice doing. The doing of the word, not just the hearing. The doing of the word is what does, uh, gives us exercise. We exercise our spiritual muscles. Mm -hmm. That's how we become from, in our weakness, we become strong. Mm -hmm. And I think that this particular week, really does focus on journaling. Mm -hmm. I yes. Think, I think it really does point out the fact that David wrote an acrostic psalm is mm. sharing that he took time to go through the alphabet mm. to start each verse with that letter. And so it's okay for us to sit and take time to mm. write out our thoughts in prayer and to write out our laments. We don't have to use the alphabet, but you can. <laughs> start with letter A, ladies. Let's start with A, you know. Right. I'm appealing to you, Lord. You know, mm. like, there you go. There's an A. I don't even know, you know. And mm. then move on to B. Just try. Mm. Just try. Yeah. Yeah, and if you remember, there's a time gap between the, his experience and these prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, but so he took the time. That's tedious. I don't know a poet. I don't know a poet, but there, that's tedious work. Mm -hmm. That takes time. But it was inspired by God Himself to do it for us. That we are learning, and, and it's an important scripture, a parallel scripture in Romans fifteen four. Mm -hmm. That all, think, all these things were written in earlier times for our instruction and learning, mm -hmm. so we will have hope. Hope, a certain hope, it doesn't disappoint. It's not like the English word hope. It's an anchor that it certainly will happen like the watchman from Psalm 130 that she mentions, like the worker who is on that night shift and right. he's waiting for to be relieved at 6 a.m. He's certain that he's going to come. And that's the same kind of certainty, that kind of hope. And these, and that particular word, uh, the things that we learn from, was actually relating to, which I was surprised I learned this t in studying this, was the old sacred writings. Mm. Yes, those things that were written in earlier times were referring to in that, in that passage, the old sacred writings. That's exciting. Yeah. That's really yeah. neat. Any other thoughts as we wrap this up? Uh, just that, uh, that the raw emotions that you feel in desperation mm -hmm. like jesus felt uh is not always like fa following the pattern 
like praise and petition. You know, we right. have these little acts, uh, adoration, confession, yeah, thanksgiving, yeah. supplication. Right. Don't, don't get hung up on that right. because what I learned and what came to my attention in this study is that the, the this was an exception to that. Jesus's prayer was an exception to that. It was pouring out his heart is just as important in worshiping God in an honest way as is to first praise him. Mm -hmm. So that was a part of worship by just going to him in faith. That's so big when you're hurting, when you get bad news. That is such faith. That is praising God. He's our first friend yes. that we should go to. Yes. Honestly, and with our concerns, our first friend that we mm. should go to. Yes. And she included on page 118 these different things that can be included in the lament from mm -hmm. an address to God, a review of God's faithfulness in the past, a complaint, a confession of sin, mm -hmm. a request for help, God's response, a vow to praise God or a statement of trust in God. Any of these things can be incorporated. And she said, don't get don't get hung up on the order of it or any yes. of those things, but to just include some of them. Mm -hmm. So get your journals out. Mm -hmm. Get your pens out. Get the scripture out, read through Psalm 25, and then take some time to write your prayers out. It's such a good practice, mm. and it helps to organize your thoughts, and it's just a great way to pray mm. and to organize our thoughts. Amen. And the one thing that I, I would also emphasize is this is God's story, and these people are in history and his story in this life. He's the creator and he made us. And, a, and God is intervening in our story. Mm -hmm. And he's in a, he's ta he, it's an intervention, a divine intervention that he has <laughs> intervened in Thank our you, story. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and it's about his story all the time. Mm -hmm. And to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, why don't we go ahead and close in prayer? Okay. Lord, thank you so much for being mighty God, a God who is worthy of our praise, and to fill us with riches and blessing and victory and not being a victim in our troubles, but having victory and receiving the blessings, no matter what the outcome is in our life. I thank you, Lord, that we can pour out your heart honestly with these raw emotions and know that you hear, you're a God who sees and hears, Lord, and that we can trust you. You are worthy of our trust. I pray that we would practice these things. We pray for all the people out there, Lord, all the other women out there who may be struggling and not being in a good place and have, find it very difficult to trust you at this time. Would you show them how worthy you are, Lord? Would you enlighten us to always remember and to come to you not just in the foxhole prayers but in daily that we would depend upon you and your promises daily we'd be desperate to know that you are our resource the only refuge and portion forever and that the living water the word and prayer and the prayer books that we as we pour out our heart to you lord that we know that we will receive the grace that's needed and that there is a better life to come, Lord, and that we would be hopeful with a hopeful anticipation and not be hopeless ever in resonating in our troubles and making our troubles too big and our God too small. Lord, we bow down to you and we thank you for the, the God-breathed psalms, the writings that depict uh, your love and your grace and your mercy uh, spoon, just spoon feeding us, Lord, in our hour of need and daily, every day, that we have to be desperate even in our good times as well as our bad times. We thank you for raising our awareness, Lord. Thank you for helping me to learn that waiting is so, so, so active in faith that as we wait on God, it is not passive, but it's very active in our faith and it will produce the results of learning and sitting at your feet and being wise and becoming more like you. Thank you for sharing uh, your glory and your character with us, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have a great week, ladies. We're so thankful you studied with us.